Today we're creating a whimsical little park bench made out of peppermint candy. This adorable candy creation is perfect for adding a touch of sweetness to your gingerbread house or even as a unique cake topper. I first designed this bench to use as part of the Fishing Elf Gingerbread House design. I'll link the video of that display in the video description and I'll tag it here. Now let's get started. The first thing you want to do, you want to think about safety. When working with melted candy, the temperatures can reach a high level quickly and will cause a severe burn if it gets on your skin. If you're working with kids, you may want to step in and help shape the bench during the steps when the candy is the hottest. And I'm going to remind you of that when we get to that step. So now that we have that out of the way, we need to get our supplies together. You're going to need six peppermint candies, such as the Starlight Mints and Red or Green, a flat baking pan. It could be a cookie sheet or a roasting pan, something that has a flat bottom to it, parchment paper, an oven mitt, a block of wood or another sturdy object that has at least one side that has a 90 degree angle on it. You need some aluminum foil, some type of oil. I used olive oil. You could use coconut, shortening, any type that you have, avocado, um, just whatever you have on hand. Then I used the Tootsie Roll mid candies, but any type of Tootsie Roll will work. And then um, some Royal Frosting. And if you're using this for a gingerbread house, you should already have some type of Royal Frosting or something that you're putting the house together with. Just save a little bit to use as the way to attach the legs to the bench. So you, you don't need much, just, just a little bit. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss future videos. All right, so let's keep going here. You want to preheat your oven to 300 degrees. While that's preheating, go ahead and cover the block that you're using for that form with foil paper and lightly coat it with oil. Set this aside until after the candies are melted. Then let's cover the baking pan with parchment paper. Again, you don't need a big piece, but you need it to be larger than your candy is going to be. And then you're going to take six of the mint candies, unwrap them, take the plastic off and place the six mint candies on the pan in two rows of three candies. Make sure that they're all touching each other and they're going to form a rectangular shape. Put the pan into the oven carefully and I found that the mints shifted a little bit whenever I moved the pan so move it slowly to keep them in place. If they do shift take the pan back out and kind of straighten them up before they get hot. Check it in about five minutes and see if they've melted enough. What you're looking for is to see if they've started to flow into each other. And you can see in the example how mine looks to, to give you an idea of what you're looking for. After five minutes, they're probably not going to be quite ready yet. I took eight for mine, but check it every minute after that because if you go too long, then the candy will start to bubble and it's going to leave those bubbles in the finished product, but it also may start burning and changing color. Then you're going to remove the pan from the oven and let it rest until the candy begins to set, but not until they're cooled because it'll be too hard to bend it at that point. So what you're looking for is the surface of it should be starting to get firm, but soft and pliable still. Now, here's the note that I told you I was going to remind you on. This is not for a child to be doing. You want to interfere as the adult and help them with this part because very serious burns could happen. Because it's so hot, I would step in and do this part for them and just have them observing it. Please be careful with this part. So once the surface of the mints are beginning to hold their shape, then you're going to carefully place your foil covered block with the corner edge along the long center of the candy. So watch how I'm doing it in the video here. And then using the parchment paper to help you pull the candy up against it so that you're not burning your fingers on it. And you'll see I kind of touched it a little bit, but I decided that I needed to have an oven mitt at this point. So use the oven mitt to hold the candy in place for a few seconds and it's going to firm up pretty quickly and then let it rest in that position until it's cooled. So you're basically just trying to get it as close around that corner of the block so that it makes that 90 degree angle to make it look like the bench seat. Now remove the parchment paper once it's cool and then remove the candy from the block and let it cool completely. This may take several minutes or it may take longer depending on the temperature of, of your kitchen. If you're enjoying this video, click the like button below to help others find it. That will help my channel as well. And then to finish the bench, you're going to cut Tootsie Roll pieces into three quarter inch pieces. And like I said, I use the midgets if your Tootsie Roll candy is firm, sometimes you'll get them in a little bit harder than others. If you just hold it in your hand for a few minutes, it's going to soften and be very pliable. Once it's softened enough, then shape it into the legs. And I shape this one by making it wider on the bottom and a little bit narrower on the top. And then I flattened both sides against the table so that it would sit on the ground, but also have a surface for me to attach it to the bottom of the bench. So you want four of those. Then with that, you're going to let the Tootsie Rolls harden, depending on how hard they were to begin with and the humidity inside your kitchen that might take overnight. So just kind of watch them. Once they have a, a nice firm finish on them and your bench is nice and firm, then you want to attach the legs to the bottom of the bench. I used Royal Frosting for mine. And so if you're going to use that, just put a little dollop on there enough to, to seal it well. 
and then let it dry until it's firm. And this again may take another overnight for you because you want to make sure that it, that the frosting has not left any moisture in it. It will come apart if you do that. If you are putting it right onto your display, you could go ahead and attach it to your base and then add the frosting to the bottom of the, the bench and just leave it in place to dry there. So it doesn't have to be something that you're moving around a lot. Just watch it. If it comes off, just glue it back on. If you're using something else, just be careful that it's not something hot that's going to melt the candy because then it may not fuse together. So if you try this project, let me know what you did with your bench. With this one, we used it as part of the display with our elf sitting on the bench and fishing in a little pond. If you want to see the full display of this, I'll link that in the show notes, as I said. I'll try to put the link up here so you can click on this as well. That's pretty much what I have here, a charming little candy bench. It's perfect for your gingerbread house, or it could be used as a cake topper if you wanted to do a little holiday cake topping. Be sure to check out my other Christmas gingerbread house tutorials and ideas as well as cooking and household tips in my other videos. Thanks for watching.